Hello and welcome back to the Edinburgh Watch Company YouTube channel. My name is Jonathan and on today's video, we're gonna be answering one of your most popular questions and that is, Jonathan, what tools do you use every day in the job that you do? So here we have the Edinburgh Watch Company bag and I'm going to show you all the various tools we've got and give you some ideas, some of the things you might like to use as a budding collector for adjusting your watches, this, that and the other. So if that sounds of interest, then please stay on board. But before we do that, I'm going to show you what watch we're wearing today. And it is one of my favorites, one of the watches that you've seen on the channel recently. I just can't really take it off my wrist. And it is the Rolex Sea Dweller, the SD4000. I think you've probably heard me say, I think this is one of the most perfect sports watches. Of course, sadly one that Rolex only kept in their collection for about three years, so it's now discontinued, but it's become a very, very popular watch. I love the look of it. I love the size of it. It's supremely comfortable and it's just a classic sports watch and that little bit different than the Submariner. Not too big, not too small, and really, really comfortable to wear. So it's getting lots of time just now. Okay, so let's get started. So many of you out there, um, you enjoy your watches. Some of you are more competent than others in adjusting the sizes of bracelets, etc. And today we're just gonna run through some of the tools I use every day. Um, and it's just about building the experience and, and enjoying what you do, but of course, not encourage you for one minute to take any risk that could possibly damage your watch. So if you're not sure what you're doing, then by all means, just you know, go to a, an approved jeweler to get your, your watch adjusted. So in the bag we've got, let's first of all take out uh, one of the biggest items. And um, this is something I found really, really useful and not something you're really gonna uh, need to, to have at home. But um, if I'm you know, meeting with customers and, and I need something uh, to give me the best sort of visibility uh, in what we're doing and also reduce the chance of, of, of losing anything. I got this fantastic um, item here and this actually I found, and I'll tilt it up there so you can see when I was actually at the Baal watch fair and I was walking around, um, of course, looking at all the watches first of all and then going and looking at the accessories and I saw this thing and it's absolutely brilliant and it's made here in leather. But what happens here is that this comes out here and you have a really good light that um, points down here. And what this allows me to do is to get a really, really good look at the any watch and also adjusting a bracelet there. So it's really quite clever. Um, I almost fell over when they told me the price of it. I think it was something like 1800 euros. So I, I, I very uh, swiftly declined on that one, but I kind of thought to myself, well, actually, this is gonna be something that's really, really uh, practical for me to use. Um, and again, it reduces the chances of any screws getting uh, lost or anything like that. So it's really, quite a cool tool, but not probably something you'll need every day, but it's something I regularly, regularly use. Um, so let's kick off with a, uh, first of all, um, my main toolkit here. Now, um, as you can see here, um, the, the brand on this one, you probably recognize that there, is it, Bergion. And Bergion is a, a very, very well-known manufacturer of watch tools. Uh, they are quite expensive, I'm afraid, but um, again, when you're using tools as often as I am, it is worthwhile investing and buying in a really, really good quality tool. Um, I buy these from Cousins, who are well-known um, uh, stockists of, of watch tools and, and something that you as a, you know, a private individual can, can easily go and buy. Uh, and again, it's just about choosing your budget, etc., and what you want to spend. But I found these to be really good. This particular box here, Again, it has all the, all the various screwdrivers I need in different uh, sizes. So just taking one out there just to show you. Uh, this one probably is one of the most popular one. And this is the purple, which I think is a, a 140. And that's the one we use typically for a, adjusting uh, the bracelets on you know, Rolex Submariners. I'll just show you here. It just fits in really nicely. and. You just get a, and then we just pop that in there and you can just see, we'll do that on camera. You just get a really, really nice uh, fit in, 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 in the screw head there. There's also another type you can actually get. Um, one of my favorite ones, although they're very hard to get. Um, 
are the screwdrivers that came with a, the old Rolex um, Sea Dweller. And what if I can just put that on my hand there, the camera may pick it up. You can see it has a slightly different design at the end there. And what that allows you to do is to get a really, really good fitment into the, into the screw there. Now, um, so the screwdrivers, of course, I think is going to be, you know, the, probably one of the first things that you're actually going to buy. Um, and again, it's, it's thinking about um, what are you going to do with them there. So what sort of bracelet have you got? Is it a Rolex? Is it an Amiga? Or is, is it a Tudor? Um, and you can get, you know, a, uh, a smaller version of this with all the sort of the popular sizes you need. But uh, I think Bergion certainly is probably um, one of the better quality ones out there and I think something that would be nice to have. And because we're shooting this video in a sort of late October 2022 and of course Christmas isn't far away and uh, maybe if you're thinking of an idea of a, of a Christmas gift and something you'd, you'd, you'd really like, then that might just be an idea to suggest something like a really nice, uh, you know, a watchmaker's toolkit. Um, so then, um, if we're thinking about um, some of the other things that we actually use here, um, when customers call me, um, one of the services I try to do is to ask a customer what is their wrist size. And because what I'm trying to achieve is that I can send their lovely new watch to them and literally it'll just fit them perfectly on the wrist. So if you're thinking about maybe buying a watch from a company like myself who again, perhaps going to be hundreds of miles away from you and it's a watch we actually have on the website and we're going to send to you, then of course we need to get your wrist size. And so I found the way that works best for me is to ask a customer to take uh, a note of their wrist size by getting a soft tape measure, something like this. And what you can do is you can wrap the tape measure around your wrist and then literally, not too tight, but I'll just put that there under camera, just get that size. And then once you've done that, you can let the dealer know what the wrist size is. What I then do with that size is that I then um, literally get, and I'll see if I can get a pen now. I get a pen here. And for example, let's imagine it was 19.5 centimeters. What I then do is I then put the soft tape measure around my wrist, around my fingers here, to, for example, just take it to 17.5. Because that then is then replicating the size it is on your wrist. And then I literally just get a little pen here and I mark it on my fingers there. And then once I've actually got the watch bracelet, I size it and I slide it up my fingers here till it fits. And so something like this, just up to there and it's not gonna go any further. And that then normally works out to be you know, just a, a good way of actually setting up the bracelet. Um, so that's just something I think you might find quite useful if you're looking to buy a watch remotely. Uh, you can take that uh, soft measurement around your wrist and then send that up to, to the dealer and they can send that size of bracelet there for you. Now, once we are uh, adjusting the bracelet, um, something that's very important here is that um, when you get uh, a watch new, um, the screws inside the bracelet are um, secured in place to ensure that they, that they don't fall out when you don't want them to. Um, so if I use an example here, um, this is a sea dweller, which I know is the, the purple fitting there. And what we do is, again, it's really important, uh, when the watch comes to you new and the, the bolts have been secured in, they're sometimes going to be a bit tight, so it's really important just to take your time, make sure you've got plenty lighting around you um, and don't try and force the screw in any watch that you're trying to adjust. If you feel with a little bit of pressure it's not coming away easily, then um, you can gently put the bracelet into some warm water, just obviously making sure you don't submerge the actual case of the watch in, but that will actually help to just soften up the the thread lock as it were that's being used for that or perhaps sometimes maybe like a hairdryer something like that just just for a short amount of time just to soften the glue off 
So once the, the screw is actually taken out here um, and we've sized the bracelet for you, what we then do is we, um, we then take the screw out here and you can just see there, if I put it on my hand there, you may just see little traces of thread lock on it. We then, we have this. Now this is um, Loctite 248, and there's different versions of this on the market. But I think this is really important to do. It's not just a matter of just putting the screw back in the bracelet and nipping it up tight, because in time, it could wear loose. And so all we do is we just literally give this a little dip in here, just to make sure that's on the thread lock there. And then we put it back together. And again, we're just, you know, nipping it up tight and that is just reduces the chance of that happening. And again, just make sure that screwdriver is, is nicely centered in there. Again, take your time, make sure you've got plenty light, says he, and it's almost shaking under pressure here, and just nipping this up tightly, making sure that's flush, not over tightening it. There we go and then just give it a, a gentle, you know, rub down with a cloth. So again, if you are looking to, you know, order some parts from Cousins, something like that, and by the way, I say Cousins, I'm not promoting Cousins in any way, it's just, it's a, it's a name of a supplier I use that I know will have these parts for you. So again, a little tube like that, and again, we're talking about it here being used for a watch, um, but you know, that is the sort of thing you might be able to use in other applications as well. So a little bit of thread lock, I think, is a, a really good idea. Now, normally um, the screws I can just pull out um, literally with my, with my fingernails, but if they're a little bit tight, again, a good quality pair of pliers just to literally get the end of the screw there and just give it a little bit of pull if it needs to. Again, not forcing anything. Again, if it's not coming out with a little bit of pull, you don't want to be damaging the screw, but just a pair of pliers, again, is a useful, useful thing to have. Now this is my, my new screwdriver. This is really is quite a special one. Um, but sometimes I just find um, you can't actually get enough purchase on one of these smaller screwdrivers. And so I, I, <laughs> I invested in this really expensive uh, Bergion one recently, and it's really, really nice. And um, as you can see, you can get a really good firm grip on that and they have uh, interchangeable heads. So you literally just pull this out and then you can select uh, a color, different color there to get the actual size that you want. But it is a really, really nice quality one. And again, when you're changing bracelets all the time, it's good just to have all the, the best gear with you. But that's the, the Bergion, it's called the 7902. And, uh, I think Santa might get a bit of a shock if he realizes he's got to buy that for you. I think it was about 250 pounds, but again, I think it's, it's something that's worthwhile. Um, again, the loop. Um, again, I, I know if you follow my chum, Paul Thorpe, uh, he talks about the loop as being a really important thing for you to have, which in essence is just you know, a form of a, a magnifying glass. Um, this is one I have here, which as you can see, it's, it's one and a half times. And I find that that, for me works quite well for most of the time. Um, again, you can get a really, just bring, the, bring it up to camera there and get a really, really good look um, around the watch. Again, so when we're looking at watches, we're, in, we're appraising them, we're having a really good look at every aspect we can do, looking across the dial, um, com sometimes comparing it to other watches there, looking at the hands, looking at the bezel, just looking at the fonts, just looking at every part we absolutely can. So we're, you know, giving ourselves peace of mind. It's an authentic piece. Again, looking at the crown, the design on the crown and the case. And then of course, looking at the bracelet as well, looking at the numbers on the back, looking at actually how all the features and the functions actually work. And just obviously allowing that to satisfy ourselves in the first instance that the watch is as it should be. Then of course, it then goes away down to our service center where it again gets checked by, by the experts. So a loop is not a particularly expensive, expensive thing to buy. This one here, is a really, really simple one. It's nice and easy to hold and works really well. Uh, then you can get different types here. So this one keeps going through batteries because I keep accidentally leaving it on. But this one here is a, what's called an LED loop. And again, you can buy these with different magnifications on them. 
and there is a lever that you just flick across there and you have this particular one I think is is a 10 times loop that's just got uh, literally an LED that lights up again uh, which is quite good but you can get another type as well that also features like a UV uh, light in it as well and I'm going to show you uh, the one I have my UV light because this is it here and again you can buy these uh, quite easily online and I use this for looking at warranty cards now this is probably not really going to work particularly well here but if I go like that um, this green uh, at the top uh, up here in the old style card you can then see the hologram appear on that um, now sadly those criminals out there who are, who are faking cards have been able to overcome that but again it's something useful uh, to look at there and then there's more detail as you look across the card here as well so the UV light is is quite a useful uh, thing to have there and then we have this tool here uh, which we use uh, it has two benefits uh, again this is a bergion on one it's the 5787 and on one end there if I just put this here hopefully the camera can focus on it you can see you have here this is for like taking out the spring bars there um, if you're taking straps off and then on the opposite then here you have a, a sort of a more, more of a sort of pin design there and again that's quite useful um, for um, often in watches here now if I use this as an example there if we can get the camera to point down there literally where I'm pointing there you can see under here you've got where the bracelet joins the clasp you've got spring bars there and they're quite useful for depressing those and we're going to actually have another video coming out soon as well um, where we're going to be talking to people just helping them to you know adjust a, an easy link bracelet there um, and then of course a polishing cloth and of course what better than our own uh, Edinburgh watch company polishing cloth and these are cloths that we give away with our with our new watches so again um, really really high quality cloth that we've used there but again when we're presenting a watch to a customer we want obviously it, it to look its best um, you know before and, and during the sort of the handover and then uh, I'm glad to say that this item is something we're not needing to use very often, but we have, of course, a face mask we take along, which of course we've used through the pandemic and not something we need to use very often just now, but you know, occasionally there may be the odd customer out there who has health conditions, who's wearing a face mask for their own benefit, then of course, out of respect, you know, we will wear one too, just to, to, to keep them safe. So those are um, the majority of the sort of tools that I use uh, every day uh, to uh, adjust bracelets, to help to validate the watch, just to get a closer look at it. And some of the things that I think could be quite useful for you to do uh, as you, you know, start to develop your watch collection and just some things to make life a little bit easier. So there we are, that was it. Hopefully that answers your question. If you've got any more questions you think I would be helpful to you in your if your love of watches, then just you know drop us an email or put some comments at the bottom of this YouTube channel. Now, some of these things I've gone through here, for those of you who love your watches, they're probably really, really obvious, but not everybody watching has that in-depth knowledge. Some of the people are just starting their watch collection, and this could, I thought could just be something that could be quite helpful. So there we are. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks very much for watching. If that has been helpful for you, then please give us a thumbs up. If you love what we do, then why not subscribe? Because this is one of only 500 videos we've done. We're trying to get a watch out every Friday now. Sometimes we have the odd holiday, so forgive us for that. But again, we're doing watch reviews. We're trying to create some interesting content, helping customers in their, their sort of watch journey. Um, but that's us. And of course, we're over on Instagram now. We've got some beautiful pictures that Ben is taking um, of our lovely watches that are coming in. Our thanks as usual to Scott, who's the, the talent sitting behind the camera here, making this old guy here look good and um, providing lovely videos for you all to enjoy. So again, my sincere thanks for taking the time to watching and hopefully we'll see you again next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.